Hey everyone, Logan here from Wallman Index, back with the next video in our Bottoms Up Development series. Today we're going to be talking about embeddings, and specifically what they are, how they work, how to use them at a low level, and how to use them in Wallman Index. So at a high level, embeddings are just numerical representations of text. So we can input a piece of text, maybe it says, hello world, and then on the output we get a list of numbers. Now this is pretty powerful because we can use this list of numbers as a sort of consistent representation of that text. Then we can use other methods like cosine similarity to calculate similarity between two pieces of text using these lists of numbers. And this is at like a low level what enables semantic search in llama index and specifically with the vector store index. And so in llama index, obviously we have embeddings. Uh, to use them themselves, it's pretty simple. Um, there's a few main methods, uh, specifically queuing text and getting text uh, embeddings, and then also just getting uh, text embedding for a single string. And on top of that, we have OpenAI embeddings, Langchain embeddings, uh, and you can also implement the embedding class itself to support any embedding model. And so we can see the example of the usage below here, where we import the OpenAI embeddings, we have our string, hello world, we instantiate the embedding model, in this case, it's using OpenAI text embedding ADA2. We call get text embedding on the text, and we can see we get our list of numbers. Uh, super simple. Uh, we also support integrations with Langchain. Specifically, this example shows hugging face embeddings. So what's going to happen when you run this code is it's going to download this model from hugging face locally to your computer. And it's going to run the model locally on your computer, uh, and it's going to do the same thing that the OpenAI embeddings did. It's going to take some text and output a list of numbers. And this is basically it for embeddings. Um, like I said, they're super simple to use. They're extremely powerful because you know, you're capturing the meaning of the text and representing it as numbers. You might be asking yourself like which embedding models are out there or which ones should I be using? Is OpenAI a good option? Is this sentence transformers model here? Is it a good option? Um, and one thing that I do like to check is the benchmark or leaderboard that Hugging Face has uh, on a specific space. So if you Google MTBEB leaderboard, uh, there's this space here on Hugging Face. And basically what this is, is it's a benchmark across 62 different data sets, uh, 112 languages. And basically what it's doing is it's benchmarking embedding models and trying to give you a clue into how good they are for representing text. And so we can see here that uh, there's a ton of models that they've benchmarked. Uh, we can see actually the OpenAI model here is also benchmarked. Right now it's seventh place. Um, but the actual scores themselves, especially in this top 10 or so, don't vary a whole lot on each task or each data set. Um, so really anything from the top 10 or top 15 is probably gonna be a good choice. Uh, so that's you know a good reason why this is the default in LAM index. It just works really well. Uh, an important I would say number in this graph or in this table here is the sequence length. And what this means is that these models can only capture a certain number of tokens of text to basically represent. And so most of these models at the top are all 512. So that means you could input 512 tokens. It'll capture you know the embeddings for that text. If you input more than 512, it's just going to get cut off. It's only going to capture the first 512 tokens. We can see here that text embedding A to 2, though, has an over 8,000 sequence length. So that makes it a pretty strong competitor, I would say, and a really good default to use. But at the same time, it is an API. You're sending information. Uh, you are incurring costs, even though they are pretty cheap. Uh, and some people may want to run their own locally. And I would say any of these are good alternatives. And actually, later on in this video, I'm going to show you how to use any of these and actually implement them yourself. So I have my notebook here where I have set up kind of similar examples that were shown in the slides. We can run OpenAI embeddings and embed our text, and we'll take like a little peek at what this looks like. So the first thing that I printed here was the length of the embeddings. So we embedded the word hello text. It transformed that into 1,536. 1,536 numbers, uh, and I printed the first 10 here, 
And indeed, it is a list of numbers, and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And under the hood, these vectors are what Llama Index is using to retrieve similar text to a certain query. Now, on top of this, uh, the embedding class itself is actually really simple to implement. And even if a certain model is not supported by Langchain or it's not supported by Llama Index, uh, you can implement it yourself. And so that's kind of what the next kind of section here does. We're going to use the instructor embeddings. If we think back to that table we saw before, instructor embeddings were ranked pretty high, I think even higher than uh, OpenAI embeddings, just like a tiny bit. Uh, so we're gonna use them. Now these instructor embeddings, they have their own kind of Python package. I followed the instructions here on the Hugging Face model card. Uh, we can install the dependencies that we need uh, and we can import them and use them. Now, a cool feature of these instructor embeddings is that you could kind of give the embeddings context for what the text is about. So what, you, what happens here is you give it uh, some text. In this case, we have a title from some academic paper uh, and then we give it an instruction. And basically what this means is that you're giving it an instruction for how to embed the text. In this case, we're saying represent the science title. So that's telling the model, okay, I'm going to transform this text into a set of vectors or a set of numbers and represent that in a sort of science domain. Uh, and this is really powerful because obviously for certain domains like science, uh, really common words might mean something really different. And so this kind of tells the model to change gears uh, and embed that information differently. And we can run that and it's going to run it locally and we can print out the entire embedding vector here. Uh, and yeah, if it's, that's the embedding vector, it works. Um, but how do you actually use this in Llama index? Well, we can import the base embedding class and import and implement it. There's just a few methods that you have to implement. Um, obviously the init, so we can set it up and then just some other methods to actually calculate the embeddings and run the model. So we saw above that we know how to run the model. We know how to, how to instantiate it. Uh, so we just have to put that information into this class. So here I'm saying the default model name is instructor large. Uh, I'm giving it a default instruction. Uh, as you may remember, we're building a chatbot for the LAM index documentation. So I kind of decided to say represent the computer science text for retrieval. Makes sense. We set up our model uh, and off we go where we've initialized. And we saw before to call the model is really simple. It's just model.encode. Uh, we give it the instruction, we give it the query or the text that we want to embed, uh, and then we return that. So we can instantiate this embedding class. Um, I'm setting the batch size to one, just because I don't have a whole lot of memory on this laptop uh, and it doesn't need to do a batch size any bigger than that. So we're gonna set that to one, it'll work fine. Uh, and then we can run it again, the same way that we ran the OpenAI embeddings and still works. And we can see here that it's only embedding into a 768 dimensions instead of the 1500 of the OpenAI embeddings. What this means is that if you create an index with this embedding model, you have to keep using that embedding model for your queries. If I wanna switch back to OpenAI embeddings, I have to rebuild my index. Uh, and that's because these vector lengths are in different lengths uh, and the vectors themselves, even if they were the same length, they're in totally different spots in vector space. So now that we have our base class set up, we can use it in Llama index. So here I'm going to set up my service context uh, and I can set the embed model to be the instructor embeddings. And if I remember, you might remember that I said the max length for these embeddings is 512 tokens. Um, I could do more. The default is 1024. I could leave it at the default, but it would only be capturing the first 512 tokens. But just to make things a little bit more fair here, I'm just gonna set it to 512 uh, and then I'm gonna set a global service context and that's just gonna work. So in the previous video, we covered like how to load data and how to create you know, a baseline query engine. And here I'm just reusing that code. Um, so if you wanna see how that's done, check out the previous video. Uh, I've just set up a helper function now to do this for me because it's a lot of code. So we could call this and build the index. And you'll notice that it took a bit of time to run this code. I ran this ahead of time. Um, and that's just because it's running locally and it's running on CPU. I don't have CUDA or anything set up uh, on this laptop, uh, but even running on CPU, that's still pretty fast to embed all, all of our documentation. 
Now I can set I can send a query to this query engine uh, like we were doing before. I'm going to ask it what the sub question query engine is, and we can print out you know its answer, uh, and we can see that it is working. It answered the question correctly. Uh, it found the documentation properly using these embeddings. Now you might be wondering, okay, it works here. Does how does that compare to OpenAI embeddings? Uh, we ran that underneath. So here I set up my service context again, but this time I set the embed model to OpenAI and I kept it at the same chunk size just to keep things fair, even though OpenAI embeddings can handle larger chunk sizes. And like I mentioned before, since we're switching the embedding model, I'm actually deleting all my saved indexes uh, so that they actually have to be rebuilt. So down here, I can rebuild them by calling my helper function. I can ask the same question again. And again, we get a very similar response. So we can see here that our embeddings are running locally and they're working just as well as OpenAI embeddings, uh, which I would say is a win because now we have embeddings that don't cost us money. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we kind of covered how embeddings work, how to set up embeddings in Lomindex and use them at a low level and how to create your own custom embeddings. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.